in today's video I want to talk about making your own two-step module for uh, any coil-on-plug engine uh, using uh, uh, some simple electronics and uh, I was able to do it for about thirty dollars so this is for the guys that are running a stock ECU or some aftermarket ECU where you might be IO limited and you can't um, uh, you can't run a two-step input or um, you know anything of that sort um, now I will say with the stock GM C ECU you can do a uh, fuel cut two-step rev limiter by using the park neutral uh, circuit and basically saying the car is in park or neutral when you're on the button and then as soon as you release the button you're not in park and neutral um, and that that uh, does work but when you're trying to spool up a turbo it's uh, not as great because you're essentially you're making you're not allowing more exhaust gases to build up in the exhaust and spool up the turbo and um, you know I, I never actually tried it with the fuel cut rev limiter but just in my head I was like no nah, this isn't gonna work so I pursued a spark cut rev limiter so uh, Basically, I'll show you where I got my idea from. What we have here, this is a uh, two-step module uh, that MSD makes. It uh, works really well, but um, they're kind of expensive. They're like 250 bucks. So what they do is they pick up your signals going to the coil, and then modify them, and then send them to the coil and it gets all of its power and ground through that and obviously it has a adjustable um, rev limiter as you can see there so that that's kinda where I got my idea from so um, this thing yeah two hundred fifty dollars and so basically what I did was I did the same sort of thing and you can see on this side that I have my plug here pulling the original coil wire and then the plug going to the coils and um, it basically intercepts the coils and um, allows you to have a two-step rev limiter. So how I did this was quite simple. Basically I made a shift light that deactivates the ignition coils. So I found, I'll show you what the module I made looks like. Excuse some of the dirty wiring. It's, uh, <laughs> this car is kind of a, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> it only gets pulled out every once in a while and, you know, just a race real quick and then, you know, all that. So I found this relay board on Amazon. It was $20. And then it's essentially a shift light that opens all of these relays and each one of these relays um, they uh, interrupt the signal going to the to the coil so it essentially it takes that uh, signal that's coming from the ECU and just turns it off above a certain RPM so if I key on the car you can see all the lights are on and then as I uh, rev the car up it will turn those lights off and interrupt the signal going to the coils, not fire the spark, and um, pick it up when the RPM is below your desired set point. So you'll notice I have a potentiometer here. So I'm using just a regular like MSD or uh, um, I don't even know what other companies make it, but uh, it's essentially a shift light that I dismantled and um, basically I'm using that as my RPM switch. An RPM switch would work great. You know, I paid five dollars for the shift light at a flea market and then I 3D printed this enclosure. So basically I bought a 2K ohm uh, potentiometer here and um, that's that's how I'm able to uh, change the uh, set point on the shift light because you know those RPM chips that you get with an MSD all they are are resistors and you can look up the resistor uh, to RPM curve and then you can just 
basically what I did is I just rotated the potentiometer to the point, measured the resistance, and I was able to make a nice little uh, gauge there. So that's all it really is. It's not terribly complicated. Just like the MSD, it gets its power from those uh, uh, plugs that go to and from your um, MSD box. So now I'll talk about my wiring diagram. So this is the basic setup. Essentially, uh, these are your relays, your solid state relays. There's going to be eight of them. I didn't show them all, um, but basically they're all wired the same. Um, they basically all basically have a whole bunch of jumpers that go from each relay activation point. So the shift light that I used, it uh, the one side of the light that is in the shift light goes to 12 volts all the time and then the other side gets grounded so I took the switched ground side of things and basically um, used that for my uh, shift light so I used a um, you don't want to just tie tie this guy to 12 volts because unfortunately the solid state relays that I bought are not uh, they don't have the normally closed uh, um, circuit which is kind of what you need because basically you want it to be when it's not switched you want it to be closed and then when it's switched you want it to be open so um, that's kind of what you want but I was able to use this sort of setup you don't want to just hook this up to 12 volt the activation circuit here you don't want to just hook that to 12 volts and then ground it because you'll fry stuff <laughs> but um, I used a, I don't think it was actually a 10K, I think it was a 1K um, pull-up resistor, and that activates the, uh, the, all of the, the LEDs, um, or all the uh, solid-state relays. And then my shift light will ground this, which will turn off all of the, um, uh, turn off all the core, or all the relays, um, so it grounds it when the RPM is above the set point that you choose. So something that people might not know about shift lights, when you first key it on on a lot of shift lights and on the shift light that I used, um, it turns on the shift light when you first key on the car and then it turns it off. So that's bad because you only want this shift light to turn on when it's above the RPM. So what you have to do is instead of switching like instead of switching you know 12 volts or ground to just turn the shift light on, what you want to do is you want to sh uh, switch your tack signal coming from the ECU, and basically th it'll get the instant or the flash when you first key on the car. That'll be gone, and then you can use your tack signal as a uh, activation circuit. So I'll show you my button. Um, shout out to. Matt at Sloppy Mechanics for the arcade switch idea. Um, I've been using that in a lot of cars, but uh, all it is is the tack signal coming from the ECU and then going back out to the shift light. So it's rather simple and it works pretty well. Um, I'm able to build about five pounds of boost on the, the foot brake. You could use it with a trans brake too. Um, it, it, you know, it has a lot of applications, and it doesn't cost 250 bucks. You know, uh, obviously, a shift light. I, I realize not everybody's going to be able to find one for five bucks. Shift lights are kind of expensive. Um, so, you know, what, some of the cheaper stuff that you'll see on, like Amazon and stuff. You know, 20, 30 bucks. Um, yeah, so I, I think it's rather neat. I'll, of course, include clips of it working. And uh, I hope you guys uh, appreciate that because uh, I thought it was a pretty clever way to um, do uh, a two-step. You know, say you're, you're uh, doing a stock computer and you want to keep a budget and, ah, I need something to help me get that turbo spooling up. You know, previously I was... I was sitting on the foot brake and I was only able to stall it up against the converter and it made zero boost on the foot brake. And now I was able to uh, spool it up to like four pounds, four or five pounds, um, and that makes a big difference. So 
I'm going to cut it off there, and uh, hope you guys appreciated the little uh, uh, insight on how I uh, did that. So, alright, I'm going to catch you in the next one.